Hello and welcome to Bibli's watercolor painting. My name is Agnieszka and we're still working on the peacock. I will show you our inspiration. Actually, our inspiration is right here. This was the original painting that drew my attention. And I thought I could some do something simple out of this. Unfortunately, as it grew, it grew into something completely new. And my first initial sketch for practice was this one. But as I started working on this painting, which is unfinished, it's only on its second wash, and I'm still not sure if I'm going to do one more part after this one. But then I did a study of the peacock right here because I wanted to learn how the peacock's face works in order to finish this one. So today I'm going to be using the study, the drawings that I did the other day as I finish outlining and defining the peacock. And I think I'm going to start with moisturizing my paints. Move my glass of water a little bit here. I'm going to moisturize my paints. Sorry guys, I have to move the microphone. Everything has to inch because we have our paints right here. There we go. Okay. I don't have this um, taped down and I'm not really sure how I'm going to finish it. I'm just going to work in the center of the painting first and then I'm going to see what happens with the rest. Really, this is a creative process and I don't know how it's going to end up, but because I have the freedom to choose these things, I can create something, oops, I can create something new out of the inspirations. I'm totally gonna move this ruler. You know, there's no need for that. No need, no need. All right. Um, I think I'm going to do. So, when I was looking at different paintings of the peacock, I saw a lot of light, kind of silvery uh, things that happen in the wing. I'm going to do to choose a smaller paintbrush, like uh, this number three. And I am going to mix some of this champagne silver here with some white and i'm going to do some really watery highlights so i'm just going to grab the water i know everything is so crowded on this desk i am working on getting something slightly bigger but this desk is huge i'm just the kind of person that takes up a lot of room with all my things all my priorities I'm just pulling some of this whitish metallic silver out of the overtone set that I've used before, as you know. And I'm just going to mix it with some water. And take the trusty spray bottle that I bought at the drugstore. I couldn't get the sticker off, so I just put some masking tape over top of it. I guess I could do a better job trying to tack that sticker up. Activating! This is activating the paint. I'm going to put some water in here because really I need a lot more water in there. And that's not a bad way of delivering water. I mean, I also have this little dropper that I can do for water. But uh, the spray bottle is very trusty and that water is never dirty. Never dirty, you know? So now I'm just picking up some of this white here. And this is the Koi set from Japan. And I quite like it. And as I went traveling this um, winter, I took this set with me. Okay, so we have some really, really watery white. And I'm just going to make some marks on the wing that kind of match the marks I saw on the peacock. Now we also know that these marks will be um, <clears throat> A lot paler once it dries so I'm just trying to honestly I'm trying to put these marks next to the dark 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 lines that I've already put there just as an extra highlight and at the same time let's remember we're not despite the study being very realistic right these are very realistic we're not actually painting a realistic peacock we're just painting an abstract peacock. 
So this is supposed to be a beginner uh, class, not an advanced class. You don't need to draw that well to be able to do this peacock. But, and notice I'm very varying the lines a little bit and sometimes I'm breaking these lines. That's because um, I want it to look somewhat natural and these are feathers and these highlights would be on the feathers. So just putting it down lightly, creating a little bit. That line's probably too thick. I need to highlight it a little bit better. All right. And then I'm just going to lay some highlights here in the tail. As we know, the peacock's tail is very luxurious. And now since I've done that, I have some just water here, so I'm just taking what was on my paintbrush. I'm making it very light. And just going to do some silvery highlights in the neck. They're just almost invisible, but in the end they will give more of a idea of feathers. Because we know that the neck I'm going back to the thicker, thicker blend. Now that we're at the bottom of the neck, because that's where we would have more of a highlight. I also picked up, um, I also opened a photo of the peak of a very real peacock on my other screen. So I'm continuing to look at it for inspiration as I create this this fictional peacock, this peacock that never existed. And this blend of white and silvery metallic is super, super light. Like it's mostly water here. Um, I'm also going to deepen some of the shadows here on the belly because I am not satisfied with the shadows here, but I am satisfied with that featheriness along the neck. Now there are also feathers along his forehead. Let's create that because we're going to have to. And this is why I think we might have four sections of the peacock because <clears throat> we're going to get, have to use some gouache for the white lines. But before that, we're going to create some shadow color. Now, I'm just washing out with this little paintbrush. I might go back to that blend, but maybe with a bigger paint brush in a minute, but let's just focus on the peacock. So now what I need to do is I need to blend two different colors. I need to blend the shadow color that's going to deepen the belly and make it look like a real peacock, a little bit more like a real peacock. And then I also need to create the quote unquote black, but I'm not going to use black. I was experimenting with real black here at the bottom before, and these, these edges are also real black, which is not going to remain that way. That's just the first wash uh, for, the, for the frame that I'm putting on this painting. But we're going to have to do something, some more detail, some more depth in here. So we're going to do a whole other thing. Now I'm going to mix the two colors and I am going to... Hmm. For the mixing, I'm gonna use a really big paintbrush or what I consider really big, which is not really, really big according to most artists. And I'm just going to pick up some of that permanent blue that we were using for the peacock. And I'm just going to work that color here with the big paintbrush. And I'm going to lay that color on my palette in one of the sections. Let me see if I can move you guys a little bit. There you go. So I'm putting down this permanent blue deep in this, but I don't want it to be just permanent blue because that's, well, it's not dark enough and it's not going to be that interesting. So I'm just going to pull up some other colors. Where is my... This other color I'm pulling up is ultramarine deep and that's going to make another dimension add another dimension and make it darker the permanent blue 
and then I'm going to add some other colors but first I'll just get some of that paint off my paintbrush there's some really good paint there I accidentally got some into the next well that's probably not a good thing because that will have white in it but I'm mostly done with it so I think it'll be okay and maybe the flowers I'll highlight with bluish white once that travels across now I want to make this darker this this shadow color so I'm going to pick up some pink I'm staying in the same color family with the cools and picking up some pink and see if that's going, I know I just took a dirty paintbrush into the pink, but it'll be fine, don't worry about it. So with every pass, with every color, it's becoming darker and darker. And I am going to now, no, you know what, I'm going to take a real cold green. I think this one is one of the colder greens I have. Maybe this one. Yeah, this one's a cold green. So I'm just going to take some of this cold green, maybe a mixture of these two cold greens, and I'm going to go in there with that. <laughs> yes, I know I splashed. I will fix that. And look at this rich, deep blue color. Now, I think this is pretty good. I think it needs a little bit more ultramarine, or not ultramarine. Maybe it does need ultramarine. If I said it, it must be true. So picking up some both colors. And this is the shadow color we're going to use on the peacock's belly. So right here, we're going to deepen that belly. Still going with the feathers. And again, every wash is an opportunity for you to maybe fix previous errors. And here I'm just putting more definition in this wing. And you know, I really would like a smaller brush. That brush was good for blending, but I'm much better with a smaller brush. But look how nicely the belly has darkened. I just have to blend this in. Just going in with water, blending the blue out, pulling some of the dark blue into the neck in feather fe shapes because you know these are still feathers and now that it's wet the first layer was dr wet and dry because we were laying the first layer of the shadow. But now we're working wet on wet. So I could then pick up some paints gray and really make a dark version of the shadow color and bring that into the belly. Now, because it's nighttime and I have so many lights here, I have to keep moving my head from the glare. And now just finishing it off with these feather like movements. And you know, I can also use some of this dark color here in the tail giving it a bit more depth in the motion but not taking out all the highlights I know I'm such a sucker for 
smooth gradients. I'm forgetting that these are feathers. Okay, we might work on that some more. I would like to create um, maybe more blacker black. Maybe I'll keep some of the shadow color, but I'll put some water next to it. Pick some of it up and then go to the same color to create something really, really dark. I want like a black, but not a black. So I'm picking up all these different colors, burnt umber, ultramarine blue, permanent blue deep. I'm going in with some water into this purple here, picking that up too, mixing it with these colors. More water. I'm going to go in with some green as well, back into the same mixture. Remember, I'm making a black, so a black is a complex color, but not all blacks are created equal. So as I go in with more, more water, now it's become a little bit teal-ish, more ultramarine, more purple. Maybe what I should do is... Instead of carrying the water from the pot to the paint every brush stroke, let's just have some water in the paints. Oh, what a brilliant idea. I'm just going in with like a little bit of black here into the mixture and also a little bit of red. A little bit of red. Excuse the motorcycle outside. Somebody's getting a delivery. Look. And look at this color, it's becoming darker and darker as I pick up more purple and more different pigments. This ultramarine will deepen it really a lot. And still going back to that permanent blue because that's the essence of our peacock. I'm going to go in with a little bit more black. So this is the black that I'm going to be using for some of the outlines and also the eyeball. I'm going to set the eyeball down now. And again, you understand my plan is to go in with gouache. And now I'm finding this paintbrush terribly big. So I'm just going to get most of the pigment out of the paintbrush into our mixture. And going for go something smaller, like the number three we were using before for these highlights. I'm just going to pick up some of our black and give this peacock some definition here in the head. Because after doing the study, I now know how the beak works, right? And I know how this should look, right? I now understand that the nose is somewhere around here and that we have a mouth and then the bottom, right? I also know that this peacock has these little feathers here. And here's where I'm going to go in with that lighter blue, the, the shadow blue. It's not quite the black I've been using to create our little feathers for the peacocks. Now, Notice how much more comfortable I am with the shapes and the colors of what I need to do. I, I don't need to explore the reference photos as much <clears throat> because I did, um, <coughs> excuse me, because I did the study and the study taught me a lot about peacocks. 
And even though the study is not, and I'm going back with the black now, um, and even though study, the study is not what, not at all the same position or whatever, like this little peacock here that I'm outlining. This study taught me a lot about peacocks in general. Now I'm finding myself in need of moving and turning this painting. And this is part of the reason why I didn't tape it down today because I knew that as I was finishing this peacock, I wanted to continue with some detail work. And detail work sometimes requires you to move the painting. And the way we are here in our little Acapulco cottage, <clears throat> do you see how I messed up and then corrected it right away? And I'm just going to blend this in by creating some shadow feathers right here where the light ones are there we go that's actually quite interesting using this almost dry brush i need to do the same with the head and i'm just using an almost dry brush with some of the black and i'm creating some feather dimensions And then I'm going to also use a gouache to add the white parts. And there we go. That's an interesting way. And you know, this kind of thing came here, but you know, the Pico could have had that. Maybe it's his little forehead. So then I'm going to take that almost black and I'm going to do some dimension here with the belly, with the feathers. Always paint in the direction of the feathers. Always paint in the direction of the feathers. And then... Blending in the line, making the line a little thicker where there is really deep shadow with the peacock. And the more I work with watercolors, the more I'm learning to eliminate, or haha, <laughs> eliminate, that's funny. I, I would have said that 10 years ago. The more I'm working with watercolors, the more I, uh, I'm able to ignore the errors that I make because in acrylic, there's no limit to fixing your errors. So you can just continue working on the painting. But with watercolor, because we're working with paper, and especially here at Bibli's Watercolor University, currently we're working with beginner level paper because we didn't think it would be fair for us to be working with super professional paper while most of our students were working with this stuff. So I agreed that when we're doing beginner classes, we're going to just use beginner painter paper. And so this paper is a lot less forgiving when it comes to layers of water and creating a watered down painting, you know, even spraying with water at this point would be, you know, could make it a little muddy. So, so you have the pe peacock, you have the tail, you have the wing. I just want to deepen the shadow here with these little highlights because real peacocks really do have these thin lines in their feathers. So just taking that almost black 
and highlighting it a little bit. Not even everywhere, just a little bit. So it's not so fakey looking. Not that it's realistic. I don't know how to explain what I mean. It's not realistic and it's never gonna be, but it's like, it gives you the impression of realism without being realistic, you know what I mean? I realize that some of these lines don't go to the edge and we need some edge lines here. All right, so now the only thing that we have to do is maybe create some flowers. Now, I really like the mother red, matter, matter, M-A-D-D-E-R, matter. I think that's how you say it. And in, I used a lot of it in the wing. And actually, you know, now that I'm touching it, I think I'm going to highlight the wing with this red a little bit more. Just because there's a lot of it in the base, but it's not really super bright. And see, but these habits, I have to admit, these are again the acrylic habits because in watercolor, I am learning and I'm getting better at this as I keep, keep teaching you guys all these different techniques I'm learning. But in watercolor, you're supposed to just paint it and leave it. Not paint it a thousand layers over, but that looks cool. I'll go with that. I'm just going to. go again doing that straight red on this side it's more like doing a shadow color so it seems more regular now more real um, I could dip that red in our blue shadow and deepen the shadow here a little bit just along this edge Remember it's feathers. Remember it's feathers. Right. We were doing flowers. Mother red. Matter. But what if we took that matter red and put it in this former white? And what if to this matter red we took this other dark red and added it? And what if we took this other dark red that had the other dark in it and, and added that? And even that blue from next door. Yeah. And what if we like drip some water in there? And then have this nice rich pinkish color. And what if then see it's not super clear because it's an, on that dark background. But I still think it's quite nicely balancing. That's all I want from that pink. I'm happy with that. I'm going to do the same with this really rich yellow. Maybe I'll do some highlights here.
just on this side because maybe on the other side it'll be like a little blue I see something else that I did not do for the peacock and I will do that now. I gave a hint of the toes so that it doesn't look like his legs are unattached. And also they have a little bit of feathers around the top of the legs. So it would look more like that, like a chicken, right? Again, studied the peacock, right? So there we go. And you know what? I think I'm going to finish on that note for today because what I want to do next requires it to be dry. And again, but you know what I will do? I will take a lot more of this black. I'm going to put it to our darkest shadow color. This one is the darkest shadow color. I'm going to take all that black, a lot of black, and mix it with that. And then I'm going to do the edges. This is going to be a big job. We're going to start with the top. But we're just going to go right across. Now, this is the second wash for the frame. And this time I am not using regular black. I'm using a quote unquote homemade black, which all the teachers say is so much better. So it's just a matter of trying to make sure you have good coverage everywhere. And again, this doesn't have to be the final wash. There might be another wash out on top of this. And we would put more paint color in there. I'm also wearing this kind of a fluffy white shirt, so a light colored shirt. So I'm trying to not get my sleeves into. Yes, I'm wearing a fluffy sh shirt while painting because we can, that's why. Go in with heavy color to define the edge. I don't know if I didn't just mess it up because that edge is not even now, but <clears throat> definitely should have listened to whoever said mix more color than you think you need because I am definitely running out of the black. Especially doing these saturated lines. Okay. There we go. See, that's like done. Now I'm definitely going to mix more color than I need this time. Before you guys say I'm mixing everything off camera. I guess I have been doing that. Apologies. Any better? 
ultramarine blue, some green, black, permanent blue deep. deep green another deep green this is hunter green um, more of this color whichever it is Kind of messed up there. Did you see that? So this frame might need another line, another um, layer. We'll see. Um, I'm also planning to probably off camera, and I'll show you guys later. Paint those little flowers on the frame, like we have in the original, um, which is here. See how it has those flowers all around i don't know if i'll do the dots but i definitely want to try the flowers and i'll probably do them with gouache with silver a mix with silver or something like that but first we need to finish the peacock and we're not quite done yet so there will be part four and for now we have to wait for this to dry so we're going to stop streaming for a while and tomorrow I'll come back and finish this peacock and then show you some of my other drawings I've been doing studying chickens. Anyway, have an 